Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. Waiting on God can get really wild, but oh, how necessary it is to know the two things that will get exposed and enlarged inside of you as you wait with Him. Take a listen, and I hope that it encourages you to stay with Him and go deeper in your own maturing process of discipleship. Love you all. Hey everybody, I am here looking out on some beautiful scenery in Ustron, Poland, as I record this from my hotel. I'm in the last few days of this major trip uh, here into Europe uh, for 2022, and Nancy McCready Ministries is really honored and privileged (laughs) to be here with so many fantastic, so many fantastic people who are, you know, they're just very real, and they are seriously seeking God for what he's doing in them, and what it is that he's doing here in Europe. And so as I am having opportunity to engage with those in Poland, Austria, Germany, uh, even uh, one or two folks from the States that I have been able to connect with here, which is always, always great, is, you know, I'm... I'm watching all of us in this slow fire, uh, which requires uh, in-depth waiting. Now, not lazy waiting, active waiting. So I've been sharing something that I've shared before, but how many of you know a part of my personal brand is to be repetitive, even to the point of being irritating, but it's okay. I need to hear things again and again, and I trust that you do too. So what to expect when waiting? Number one is expect your foolishness to be exposed. In the waiting, our foolishness gets exposed much like Abraham and Sarah's foolishness. God promised there would be a child. And they grew impatient and said, well, we'll just handle that ourselves. And what do you know? The foolishness of Abraham and Sarah came on the scene for everybody to see. Uh, But the scripture uh, says that was the child of flesh. You see, God had a plan, and it was a long-range plan. (laughs) And that long-range plan had a name. His name was Isaac. And according to Galatians 4, Isaac represents the child of promise. You see, my friends, you may be trying to get God to fulfill certain desires and promises that you feel that he has made to you. But my friends, the promises of the Father have already been made yes and amen in Christ. And sometimes we're living so low, our view is so skewed, that it takes quite a while for us to even really awaken and to realize what God has been talking about all along. Because we're satisfied, really, with quite little. And then what happens in that foolishness is even our controversies with God, our anger with Him, a feeling that we've been more faithful to Him than He has been to us. Because we've been faithful to you, God, and you were supposed to give us what we wanted. (laughs) Wait just a minute. That's not how this works. We're we're not in some deal with God. You know, I serve you and then you give me what I really want, (laughs) which is not you. You know, I, you know, this is when the foolishness of self begins to emerge. I had somebody that I spent time with recently who said it very, very strongly and powerfully as it was coming to them literally in the conversation uh, we were having is how funny it is that those of us who seem to be so hot to represent God barely know him. (laughs) 
I turned and looked. I was like, well, yes, that is so true. And I thought, that is so, (laughs) so necessary for us to hear. How is it that we're so hot and can't think of anything else other than ministry or, you know, and really we find out what's been fueling so much of that was self, what it would mean for me. And once I got really honest with myself, or when you get honest with yourself, you realize, I don't really know if I want to do all that, the real work. I don't know if I really want to be that responsible But I did like the idea of, you know, going places and being in front of people and being needed and looking good and, you know, all these things. And you're like, my God, thank you for coming and exposing my foolishness and the shallow, shallowness of self. That it would use God under the pretense of ministry and this and that. Now, again, there's far more to that than what I can share here But trust me, my friends, when you're in the slow fire of God literally getting you ready for what he wrote over you before the foundations of the world, what it is that he's after, what you were actually made for, which is him, and then the two of you together, oh yes, yes, there will be mighty works that come through the abiding life you have with him. But the exposure of our foolishness comes as we wait. The second thing that can happen in waiting in this slow fire process of actually growing up as who you are is that waiting enlarges you into the capacity that God's already written over you. You see, you can't perform to get a larger gift, uh, you know, a larger measure, uh, greater influence, and so many times we, we are trying to do so many things, trying to promote up kind of in the kingdom of God. No, no, your life, your measure, what God intends for you and him together, all of that's already been written. So sometimes people will say to me, well, then what's the point of all of this work and faithfulness? And I say, I know that's a very good question. That's a very, very good question. What is the point of all of that? Why are you doing all of that. You see, we're growing into what he's already put within us. Romans 8, 23 and 24 in the Message Bible says that there is something that Holy Spirit is arousing within us as we wait, as the pregnant creation cries out, And it says that in the waiting, you will not be diminished any more than a pregnant woman is diminished in the waiting. You see, the waiting gives opportunity for the enlarging of what's already in us. This this waiting in the Lord and with the Lord is very, very key, very pivotal. It exposes foolishness. And it enlarges the life that is within us. One of the things that can happen, from what I understand with a pregnant woman, is that she begins in that waiting. She begins to do what's called in English, nesting. And nesting, in some of its simplest forms, means you begin to get highly, highly focused on what needs to go, what needs to stay, And what new needs to be brought in, if you will, to the house to get ready for that which is about to come forth. What is about to emerge, now our time in waiting, as we give up on our foolishness, as it gets exposed, and we realize the foolishness that we've been involved in. Oh, God is using that so powerfully to bring his sons to him It's not to condemn you. It's just to get you into agreement with God that those things are foolish. And he says, come on, sons, come on into maturity with me. And so then as we really get into the slow fire, true waiting with God, what's in us actually begins to enlarge what he has put within us. Begins to enlarge. It begins to show itself. We begin to see maybe some of the specifics as it enlarges. 
We don't know fully what it will all look like and be, maybe. But he begins to have conversations with us, and we begin this process of nesting, which is, I've got to get things ready. So I'm going to have to get rid of some things. Some things are going to have to move out. They're not going to make the whole trip. Maybe they were good for a time, but no longer. Because I've got to get, if you will, um, a certain kind of organization Right, I've got to put some things in place so that when it actually is happening, you see, the, the mother can't wait until the baby is born to get the room ready. The mother can't wait on certain things. Now, some things you can't do until the baby is born. But right now I'm talking to you about what it means to be waiting. There are certain things you need to allow to happen and to be engaged in in the waiting that if you wait until everything happens, then you're, you're, you're out of sync. You're not prepared. Hmm? So I want to encourage you today. If you're having to see your foolishness, and maybe it's gripping you, maybe it's haunting you, maybe you are overwhelmed with what God is having to reveal to you about what you've been involved in, stay with him, my friends. He's not showing it to you to disqualify you. He's revealing it to you so that you can agree with him about what it really is and that you can lean into him like never before and give up on it and move with him. Remember, don't take Christian lessons from the devil. He'll have you pitching head first into condemnation and fear and torture. I mean, aren't you tired of that? The new man gets tired After a while, he's like, wait just a minute. (laughs) Why do I continue to bow to something that I say I know is not of my father? Father, if it's you revealing this foolishness to me, thank you. Thank you, Father, for delivering me from me and delivering me to you. You see, just like when he begins to show you what's really in you and He wants to feed you food that causes the life within you to grow so that the two of you can start getting ready. Because, my friends, we haven't seen anything yet. The days that are ahead, they are days of great glory and great trouble. And we need to be sober and alert. We need to agree with God about our foolishness, and we need to agree with Him about the capacity that He's put within us. You know, the assignment goal number three of Nancy McCready Ministries is to develop those who will violently embrace their greatness, knowing that it comes completely out of his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus. You see, my friends, we've got to, we've got to come into that place with him to say, Father, if you want me, you can have me, the one you created before the foundations of the world, the new man. And bring me forward, Father, in life with you first, and then begin to develop in me how I might identify with you and what you're doing in this hour of history. My friends, this is our generation. Hmm? So I hope this encourages you today. It's encouraging me just as I share it with you. So, from Ustron, Poland, I'm about to open up Cross Encounter tonight here at Bethel Church in Ustron, Poland, the oldest Pentecostal church from what I understand in all of Poland. Now, it has a historic, as all of us do, there are, there's the historic, but my friends, there is the fresh. So let's all step into the fresh together. What do you say? Hmm? Let's stay with him uh, in real-time engagement, real-time preparation. So, I love you all. I'll talk to you soon. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.